There's nothing like the moments that surround a morning or evening twilight. The sun is hidden below the horizon and the sky takes on a brilliant blue shade. This period of time is known as the blue hour and whenever I see it, it gives me energy to get going with my day or it relaxes me to end my day right. The power of light, specifically sunlight, and what it does to us amazes me. In today's episode, we'll look at the many benefits of sunlight, practical ways on how to enjoy sunlight, and we'll try a new recipe from the New Start Kitchen. All this and more on today's episode of New Start Now. Back in the early 1900s, a small town in southern Norway called Rukon was established. But from the very beginning, it had a problem. Set at the base of a majestic mountain range, the town would spend half of each year in the shadows because the sun was unable to rise high enough above the mountains to shine into the valley below. Town leaders and citizens knew the importance of sunlight for their health. So they proposed a variety of solutions. One suggested they construct giant mirrors at the tops of the peaks to bring sunlight into the valley below. But they lacked the funds and resources. So they settled for a cable car system that would transport citizens to the top during the darkest months of the year. This is how the town of Rukon dealt with the lack of sunlight for almost a hundred years until in 2013, they finally were able to construct those giant mirrors to bring light into the darkness below. I'm your host, Jonathan Hunter, and today, We'll be talking about sunlight, one of the eight components of a New Start lifestyle, and the letter S in New Start. Even back then, the settlers of Rukon were on to something. They knew the importance of spending time in the sun. Up next, we'll hear from someone else who discovered for themselves the importance of sunlight for our health. So my name is Dana Cole and I live in Terrabella, California. Uh, I grew up in Southern California and my husband and I moved here to the farm about 15 years ago. I'm a chiropractor, semi-retired, but my main job is I run a thoroughbred racehorse farm. Uh, I started um, racing my car in 2020 in August, so it hasn't been very long, but it's very fun. I go about every other month racing. Um, Anyway, it's hard to explain. <laughs> As a teenager, um, I was pretty athletic. I rode my bike a few hundred miles a week. I played tennis. I used to roller skate a lot. I would roller skate probably five to 10 miles a day. I was very active. I did a lot of volunteer work and I was really involved. And then uh, I graduated from high school and about a few months later, I got diagnosed with leukemia. When I first got diagnosed, it took a year to find a donor. And during that time, I was on a chemotherapy. And it was about five years of recovery. I was sick a lot. I mean, I was probably in the hospital once a month. When I got out, they said probably I would live to be 30. So at that point, I was 21. And I figured I would give them five years. And I did everything. I said, I'll do anything you say, because I really wanted to live. So for the, the sunshine, I started getting way too much sunshine uh, when I was younger. I was always tan. In fact, my friends called me sunshine because I was really tan all the time. And then the bone marrow transplant with the full body radiation was the final you know, straw that just fried my skin. My whole skin was blistered everywhere. So I had to, because of the leukemia and the treatment, I had to avoid the sun for a long time. Well, as I got healthier, I started adding sunshine back in and having no repercussions. And then about three years ago, I started getting skin cancer. So I had to go back to hat and I wear like these golf sleeves, you know, that cover your arms and stuff. I still am outside, but I just protect myself. 
I'm 50 now, so I guess about 10 years ago, I started like progressively like gaining weight, but I was still exercising a lot, still very active, gardening and walking, and I've got my animals. I love to, I was riding horses. I was very athletic. And all of a sudden I was just kept gaining weight and I couldn't figure it out. I asked my doctor to um, check my thyroid. So I had hypothyroid. So I got on meds for that and it helped a little bit, but not enough. So I just started getting more like sluggish and feeling bad about myself. So about two years ago, my husband started realizing I was really frustrated. I said, why don't you go, you know, to a fat farm? <laughs> so I started, I laughed like thinking of oh, fat farm, you know, so I looked at like weight loss clinic, health retreats, and I looked at all kinds of stuff. Weimar came up, so I looked into that and I read, I watched the video online. I wanted it to be something that would be life, a life change, not something that I was gonna go exercise so hard that is unrealistic to do this when I'm 80. So I was at the dentist here in town and I had told her, cause she's really fit and just is a beautiful woman. Well, at this Weimar Institute, you know, and she's like, exactly, that's how I eat. And, and she's like, go, you have to go, you have to do it. So I came home and she really, you know, encouraged me to come. So I did. One thing that happened when I was at New Start is I found out I had a lot of other health issues. When I first got there, they did blood test and um, they did the treadmill test. And so I realized on the treadmill test, my right atrium was enlarged. So I had some heart enlargement. I found out I had high liver counts and um, I was, oh, the biggest one, was the high liver counts, but also that I was pre-diabetic was a total shocker to me and high cholesterol. Cause I don't never really ate a lot of meat anyway, but high cholesterol, that was just like, whoa. So when I came back and had an abdominal ultrasound, they found out that it was my gallbladder. It was filled with sludge and stones. They said, you have to have your gallbladder removed immediately. When I went in for my gallbladder surgery and they told me, um, let me see your blood test. And they're like, why didn't they check your vitamins and your minerals. I mean, it's like the most important thing. They should have tested that. We're not gonna do surgery without that. So they went and did the test and like, wow, your vitamin D count is really low. Now I wear a lot, I wear sunscreen, but I try to get about 15 to 20 minutes of sunshine every day without sunscreen, without a hat, you know, to make sure I get it naturally. But I'm taking the supplements until my tests go normal. I know one thing is since I've been on supplements and getting more sunshine, I am a lot happier. Like it just brings my mood up, which I didn't even know, realize that I was feeling kind of tired and down. And then once I started the supplements, I was all of a sudden I was like dancing and singing again. And <laughs> once my vitamin D count started elevating back to a normal level, I could definitely notice that my mood was better. It, brings, it just brought like sunshine into my life, you know, as a metaphor. I didn't realize how much vitamin D played a role in your emotional well-being. I mean, it really makes a big difference. All I know is I just feel a lot better since I've been eating this way. And I've gotten probably like five or six friends and family members to start eating better. Because what are you doing? You know, that you, you look great. And they're not talking about weight loss because I haven't lost a whole lot of that, but just how I, my demeanor and how I feel and stuff like that. So my parents have gone that way. My dad is a pre-diabetic. I mean, he's, he's a diet type two diabetic, sorry. And um, he's eating this way and it's definitely improved his counts. And I have a few friends as well. New Start um, really helped me understand the benefits of um, sunshine and um, vitamin D in those lectures, they would talk about it, but you really don't get it until you're out and about in the sunshine. And the 20 minute walks that, you know, they uh, requested at New Store is a perfect amount of sunshine. You know, it turns out that's exactly what my doctor recommended.
Don't you love the feeling of sunshine on your face? And it's even better when you get to enjoy it out here in nature. You know, we've all heard about the connection between vitamin D and sunshine, but if you're anything like me, you want some more clarity. Up next, we're gonna hear from our trusted team of doctors about how sunshine can help our well-being. Oh, you want me to do this thing? Yeah, yeah, go for it. You're serious. Yeah. Take one. Sunlight has a lot of positive effects on our health, more than we ever realized before. They have found that sunlight can actually lower your blood pressure. But if you have low blood pressure and you get out in the sun, it can actually raise your blood pressure. There's a number of psychiatric diseases that are tied to sun and lack of sun. So there's something called seasonal affective disorder, SAD, uh, interesting name for it, that happens almost exclusively in people in the wintertime who are not getting enough sun exposures. It actually is responsible for chemical changes in our system, for something as simple as our circulation. It's not just getting out and exercising, but the actual sunlight itself can make chemical changes such as nitrous oxide that helps to dilate our arteries and help our circulation. Um, sunlight's important to activate certain hormones in your body like vitamin D. Um, and vitamin D is an integral part of cholesterol metabolism, of disease prevention, specifically colon cancer is one a common example of sunlight prevention. So getting uh, a certain amount of sunlight every day whenever possible is very important for mental health as well as for physical health. Well, lots of things factor into how much sunlight a person should have. And the reason for that is because people come in different hues, right? Their skin's different, they live in different parts of the world. All of these things affect the amount of sunlight that you need to be exposed to. If you are dark skin, you're gonna need more sunlight. If you are very fair skin, less sunlight. But 20 minutes a day, you know, several times a week would be a minimum if at all possible. I think the biggest risk without sunlight is the effect it has on mental health and our immune system. There's a lot of research studies on the benefits of sunlight, um, but also avoiding the extremes. So again, it's such a wide body of literature that um, I think the standard is pretty clear that um, a modest amount of sunlight every day is adequate, um, but over overdoing it um, is, is very dangerous. I actually am not an advocate of sunblock when we haven't been in the sun. Expose the majority of your skin to full sunlight without the sunblock for probably about 20 minutes a day, maybe you could go up to 30 maximum, then after that, put on the sunblock. Now, where I would recommend it is to avoid the sunburn. So get enough to get your vitamin D, but when your skin starts changing color and you know that it's past the time and you're gonna get burned, you wanna avoid that because sunburns can turn into cancer 20 years later. In terms of your risk of cancer, you don't wanna be out in the sun during the hottest part of the day, which is typically around 10 to two. That's when the sun is the highest, you get the most ultraviolet rays. So it's, it would be good to get your sun at times other than that. So earlier in the morning or later in the afternoon where the sun is not as high, not as hot, and it's uh, better for your skin. Sunlight is incredibly important for our health, not only to set our circadian rhythms, but I think all of us understand how vitamin D is an incredibly important vitamin for our health. There's been so much information regarding vitamin D in the immune system, vitamin D in mental health, and of course, that's where we get it from, is from the sun. Vitamin D also plays a role in blood sugar and um, it helps to control that. It also helps our um, immune system to work better. Vitamin D is an antioxidant, so it actually protects us. Vitamin D tablets will uh, ostensibly replace your vitamin D if you take enough, okay? But, Again, sunlight is more than just vitamin D. And since the sunlight is more than vitamin D, you, you should get uh, sunlight. This study looked at sunlight exposure and COVID-19, but in a way that these, these latitudes were so high up that there was no way people could be getting enough vitamin D with the sunlight exposure that they were getting. They were still noticing that sunlight exposure, even at those high latitudes, was improving mortality in COVID-19. So what does that tell me? That tells me that sunlight is doing something more than just vitamin D. When you have enough vitamin D, the, the sunlight will actually destroy the active form of vitamin D in your skin so you don't overproduce it. It's actually a perfect auto-regulator. 
But there are many more benefits from, from the sun than just vitamin D. So sunlight help us with our immunity, with our mood, with our um, ability to destroy bacteria and so forth. But if you don't get sunlight, your, all of your cells in your body will move in the direction of cancer. We have enough evidence that, that uh, vitamin D is not just a vitamin uh, that sometimes you find in food. It's, it's actually a, a hormone. It is involved in many, many uh, interactions and reactions in the body. We know for a fact that people that are low on vitamin D don't fight infections as well. They are more prone to COVID and they're more prone to more serious forms of COVID. We, we need to have a, a proper balance. Um, with the right amount of sunlight to make sure our bodies have vitamin D to work and avoid the overexposure um, that can lead to, to, to many different types of skin cancer. And not having enough vitamin D is a, is a serious problem. It's a deficiency that can cause a plethora of different kinds of disease. Sunshine is essential for your health. Hi there, I'm Dr. Gallant. Did you know moderate sunlight exposure increases the production of serotonin, the brain's feel-good hormone? Serotonin is also elevated by eating excessive amounts of refined sugars, like ice cream and cake. Diets high in refined carbohydrates, like what is in ice cream and cake, have been linked to an increased risk of obesity. Obesity contributes to many health challenges. Therefore, it is better to get our serotonin from sunlight rather than refined carbohydrates. The sun is an established energy source that continually powers the cycles of life for plants, animals, and us humans. Abundant here in California, sunlight not only provides us with many health benefits, but supplies one of the cleanest and most powerful sources of energy. Energy that we have learned to harvest through solar panels such as these. While there are many benefits to sunlight, it can at times make things a little bit toasty. On warm days such as this, there are few things as enjoyable as a nice, cold, refreshing scoop of ice cream. Let's head on over to the New Star Kitchen to learn how to make this refreshing treat perfect for any sunny day. Welcome to the New Star Kitchen. My name is Charlene Coutte, and today we're going to learn how to make carob pecan ice cream. Now, ice cream is a firm favorite in our home, and it's a nice treat to have. The ingredients are two cups of raw cashews, two cups of water, a cup of coconut sugar, two tablespoons of lightly toasted carob powder, two cups of plant-based milk, whichever one you prefer, a tablespoon of maple syrup, and salt, just a pinch of salt to taste, and some toasted chopped pecans. Okay, so first we're going to put the cashews in the blender. Now, if you have a high speed, speed blender, this works really, really well. But if you don't, it's not a problem. You can still use the blender that you have. I would just recommend that you soak your cashews overnight so that they're really, really soft. So you add your water. And we're going to blend this first. And then add the rest of our ingredients. So make sure that the lid is on. We don't want a mess. Now you want to make sure that this mixture to start off with is completely smooth. You don't want it to be gritty. So you can just scrape down all of these excess bits and just keep blending until it's smooth. Now be aware that we have to chill this before we churn it. And the more you blend, the hotter it's going to get. 
So you want to make sure you do it as quickly as possible without turning it into a soup, a hot soup. <laughs> I think we're good for that. All right, now we can add the rest of our ingredients. So in goes the coconut sugar. In goes the carob powder. You can also use raw carob powder, but the toasted carob powder gives it a really good flavor. Here's your maple syrup. also add some good flavor to just your pinch of salt I add salt to just a little bit of salt it's it's optional you don't have to put it in there I just find that it helps to enhance things when they're sweet it brings out their flavor so then in goes your preferred plant-based milk all right and then we are going to blend that again start a little lower this time. I'm going to scrape down Again, seems my coconut sugar is sticking to the sides a bit. So you want to make a completely smooth, blended mixture. There we go. Hopefully that will blend all the way through now. Last quick mix. All right. And if you want to double check that it's smooth, you can just feel. And I think that's pretty good. So now we will take this and we're going to put it in a container, whatever container fits in your freezer or your fridge, and allow it to chill. You want it to be as cold as possible, then it gives it the best chance in your ice cream maker to get really good smooth ice cream. So we'll be back soon. Hi, and welcome back. Our ice cream is now chilled, and we're going to insert it into our ice cream maker, so we need to get the frozen container out of the freezer. I'll be right back. So once you take this out of the freezer, you need to move pretty quickly. And you're going to insert your paddle and put the lid on. And then we are going to set it to the ice cream setting and pour in this mixture. Mine has this little cap on it. Now you can either use these pecans in the middle of your ice cream churn, so kind of a bit towards the end. I have a 25 minute setting, so maybe five minutes before the end you can just shake some of these in, or you can just save them to the top, it's up to you. 
So we're going to let this ice cream finish churning and we'll be back soon. So our ice cream maker has finished churning and let's see what we have. Let's take this out. You just wiggle the paddle out. There we go, it's definitely finished now. So we push this off. So this is a why it's great to chill your ingredients to start off with, because when it comes out of the ice cream maker, it's ready to go. And I love this kind of soft serve consistency. So, well, we can just put this over here and let's scoop some up. This is a wonderful, rich flavor. And then this is where you can top it with your nuts or if you've put it in before. Great, you can even add more. It's totally up to you. And there you have it. A nice bowl of fresh homemade ice cream. It's great for kids. You know what ingredients are in there. That's what's amazing about this. And you can control the sweetness. So. It's the perfect way to enjoy the summer in a healthy way. Welcome back. It's worth waking up early to catch a sunrise like this. We're learning more every day about how sunshine affects not only our physical lives, but also our mood. Up next, Dr. Gallant will share more on this. With us today, we have Dr. Roger Gallant, who is the medical director for the New Start program here on the Weimar Institute. And Dr. Gallant, we've been talking about sunlight, and we've heard about how it is optimal for us to get sunlight in order to have good health. But what kind of effects can this have on the body if someone's not getting enough sunlight? So sunlight is very important. Sunlight uh, allows our bodies to produce the only vitamin that we can synthesize, which is vitamin D. Hmm. And vitamin D plays an important role in many aspects of the body. It uh, helps us um, to put calcium in our bones to make them stronger. It also uh, has been shown to have anti-cancer effects, helping with things like breast cancer and prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. It also plays a role in the... Um, in helping our bodies to, to be healthy, helping to make sure our endocrine system works well. And um, vitamin D helps us uh, to, to maintain our, our homeostasis, keeping our bodies in, in tune. And so uh, vitamin D is crucial, and often we don't get enough. Hmm. So what about for someone, per se, who, you know, let's say has a job that's indoors and isn't able to get out a lot, uh, what what kind of effects can that have maybe even on their mental health if they're not getting enough time in the sun? So vitamin D plays a role in um, in helping our bodies to be healthy, but the sunlight itself is, is crucial for our brains also to get out and get some sunlight. Um, it sun The sun actually helps our brains to produce serotonin. Hmm. And serotonin is our feel-good hormone. It's what makes our brains happy and content. Hmm. And so it's important to get some sunlight. And what I tell people is if you work a busy day, maybe from 8 to 4 or 9 to 5, try and get out early in the morning when the sun is just coming up and, and just allow a little bit of that to, to hit your eyes without wearing sunglasses. You don't have to look at the sun, but getting that light actually helps your body to start producing serotonin and shift from the melatonin at night to the serotonin, which helps you to be more alert in the morning. Hmm. So it's like a little natural energy booster in the morning to get and you going. mood lifter. To and mood extent. lifter too, absolutely. So let's say if somebody, uh, like you mentioned, is only able to get out in the morning, what time period do you recommend for them to get uh, each day or maybe each week in order to have these benefits that you've been talking about? So I think if, if for most of us, depending on where we live, for most of us, if we can get about 30 minutes a day of sunlight, that's a good thing. Um, if we live in the areas of the world where we're farther from the equator, 
I recommend that people test their vitamin D level and see where it is. And then that determines if they need to supplement with something, especially during the winter months when there's not as much light and the sun is not as high in the sky so you don't get as much of the ultraviolet radiation. So let's say you, you brought out a good point and I appreciate that about maybe some times of the year when there's not as much sunlight. And you know, people may be waking up in the morning when there's no light and then going to sleep at night also when there's no light and getting right. back from work and everything's done in the dark. Um, and what, what kind of uh, re recommendation can you offer to someone maybe who lives in more of the northern climates or the areas where they're getting even less sunlight than somebody who's closer to the equator during, during those winter months? So again, you want to know what your vitamin D level is to test it, but there are um, things that you can do which is not as good as being out in the sun. Um, one of the things I'd recommend is that people, if they can, on a lunch break, get out and get a little sunlight. But if not, you can use a blue light, which has a wavelength very similar to sunlight in terms of its ultraviolet. And so that uh, can help with your mood and help with things like seasonal affective disorder, where people in the wintertime have uh, more uh, depression and, and not as elevated a mood because of the lack of sunlight. Mm -hmm. um, so those are things I think that can be helpful. Well, thank you, Dr. Galan. I appreciate you taking the time to share with us about sunlight, and I hope that we can go out and implement these principles that you've given us and gain the benefit. Up next, we have Dr. Randy Bivens, who's going to be sharing with us about cancer and vitamin D. Hi, I am Dr. Randy Bivens. Did you know that sun exposure can actually decrease many forms of cancer? We have been using sunblock for years to decrease skin cancers but it has also been blocking our production of vitamin D. Vitamin D is an important substance that reduces osteoporosis and is also an antioxidant. But maybe most importantly, vitamin D functions in gene modulation, which can lead to suppression of bad genes. In a recent study, men receiving the most sunlight had a 50% reduction in prostate cancer when compared to those receiving the least sunlight. So don't be afraid to expose yourself to moderate sunlight. For those stranded in a dark storm, a beam of light shining from a lighthouse is a signal of guidance and safety. On those days when everything feels dark and it seems like I'm going through the struggles of life on my own, I find comfort in the verse of 1 John 1, 5. It says, God is the light that dispels darkness. He is the lighthouse. Up next, Dean Cullinan will share more on this. Unless you subscribe to the truly implausible theory that everything came from nothing, that the beauty that you and I behold all around us is the product of sheer random luck, then you'll know that on the fourth day of creation, God created this great big ball of burning gas that you and I call the sun. And what a fine creation it is. It gives us just the right amount of light and warmth to keep our circadian rhythms intact and to keep our bodies nice and cozy, depending, of course, on where you live. Were it any colder, we'd freeze to death. Life just wouldn't be sustainable. Any hotter, and these seas and oceans and waters that surround us would cease to exist, and the earth would be scorched. Because of its life-giving properties and its gargantuan size, it comes as no surprise to know that throughout the ages, various civilizations and people groups turned towards the sun to worship him. Paul wrote to the Romans about this tendency to idolatry, saying that the people would take the truth of God and make it a lie, that they would turn to the created things and worship and serve them instead of the creator himself. The scriptures teach us that we are not meant to worship the sun, but rather we are meant to worship the sun. So while the sun in the sky may illumine the darkness that's all around us, only the Son of God can expel the darkness that is within us. 
And whilst this sun is vital for growth, the production of fruit and crops, only Jesus Christ, the Son of the Most High God, can produce the true growth of character, the production of the fruits of the Spirit. So yes, go out into the sun and enjoy its light, its warmth, the vitamin D and all of its benefits. Just remember that more than the sun above, we need the sun within. The question is, are you willing to let Jesus Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine not just on you, but through you? We hope that you found today's program helpful and enlightening. From sunrises to sunsets, we've seen just how important light is to our well-being. Perhaps you have some more questions about light or other health components. Well, our new Start Online program is just for you. It offers health presentations pre-recorded by doctors, delicious plant-based recipes from the New Start Kitchen, and the components necessary to make a lasting change. Start today by clicking the link below. Until next time, I'm your host, Jonathan Hunter. And remember, it's never too late to make a new start now. Uh, new start has changed my life a lot. I lost 11 pounds when I came here and uh, my medications have been dropped off. I have very, very few. I was on 11 kinds of medications and I only have three that I'm taking. And I believe that my doctor, my primary doctor, after he sees my labs, he might as well change the other three that I have. This is something I've struggled for years. The place is beautiful. Every worker here is very wonderful. A spiritual place, a good place to be at. The doctors are so good. Everyone that work here have supported to my change. And I'll go home happy. I'm here in the beautiful surroundings of, New St of Weimar and the New Start program. We're just finishing up. It's been a wonderful experience. The food is good. It's so healthy. Everyone is so friendly and uh, you can get a lot of good help from the doctors and the nurses and the best part of all is the massages in, uh, <laughs> in the spa. And uh, so I would really recommend this place. I feel much better, more energetic, and uh, it's uh, a wonderful experience. I would re recommend it to anybody.